What do the clothes we wear, the coffee we sip, and the petrol in our cars have in common? They've all reached us thanks to commodity trading. But despite our lives being so dependent on it, the business is rather cryptic. And tiny landlocked Switzerland is a big player in the global commodity trading business. What is commodity trading exactly? And why is Switzerland a leader? First, let's look at what is considered a commodity and at how these are traded, namely the players involved. Then, at how Switzerland came to play an important role in the business, historically and financially. Finally, we'll see why commodity trading can be considered a controversial and opaque business, and what Switzerland is doing to regulate the sector. A commodity is a tangible substance or product that can be traded, bought or sold. Most commodities are raw materials, basic resources, agricultural or mining products. Gold, coal, gas, livestock, sugar, rice and cotton are all commodities. Wool is a commodity, a scarf is not. Cocoa beans are a commodity, chocolate isn't. Depending on their origin, these products are divided into soft commodities, which can be grown, and hard commodities, which are mined, that include energy commodities like electricity, gas, coal and oil. Commodity trading, simply put, is the activity of buying and selling. Contrary to shopping, trading involves buying and selling goods possibly before they are even produced, and in large quantities. Trading can either happen physically, involving a visual inspection of the traded goods, or in derivative markets. In the latter case, there isn't any visual inspection, and the trade happens through paperwork thanks to agreed standards. Commodities are traded through futures and forwards contracts. In forwards contracts, the buyer and seller agree on a fixed price for a commodity at a certain point in time. For example, an agreement to pay $100 per tonne of palm oil in six months for a total of 10 tonnes of palm oil. Futures are like forwards contracts, but the prices fluctuate daily and are not fixed. Commodity trading organises the worldwide flow of goods, from the producers to the manufacturers. That's how a chocolate factory gets its sugar, cocoa beans and milk. However, trading commodities is also referred to as investing. In the physical market, commodity traders seek raw materials to manufacture goods or to sell them to manufacturers. But trading in the derivative market can be used as a way to make a profit off the buy-sell transactions. Besides trading companies, whose expertise is in sourcing, transport, logistics, financial instruments and risk management, several other providers are involved in physical commodity trading. Certification and inspection companies are responsible for setting and verifying the standards for the trade and checking that these are met upon delivery. Specialised banks provide the necessary capital to trading companies and support them in assessing the investment's risks. Insurance companies safeguard traders against unexpected disruptions of supply chains due to events such as a pandemic, a war or natural disasters. Shipping companies bring the traded goods from the producer to the manufacturer. The Mediterranean shipping company, MSC, the second largest container shipper and the third biggest cruise ship operator, has its headquarters in Switzerland. Other actors are involved in the derivative section of the trade. Pension funds, banks and hedge funds invest their money in commodities, influencing their prices. Companies doing physical commodity trading can also invest in the derivative market to hedge against risks to their business. Switzerland's involvement in commodity trading can be traced back to the 15th century, when its ideal central location had merchants from all over Europe meeting on its city squares to exchange goods. The importance of Switzerland grew as family-owned businesses developed. The Folkard brothers near Zurich and the Nestle and Andre families in the canton of Vaux established themselves on the global trade market at the end of the 19th century. The development of international organisations in Geneva not long after that helped strengthen Switzerland's neutral and international profile. 
This served the country well after the Second World War and during the Cold War. The small Alpine nation was the place to be to trade with East Asian countries and to work with modern infrastructure. Between the 1960s and the 1990s, cotton merchants from Egypt, Russian oil traders and Italian metal traders set up offices in Geneva, Zug and Lugano. These are still considered the major commodity trading hubs in Switzerland. Low corporate taxes, skilled labour, high quality of life and the strong financial sector contributed to the country's continued attractiveness for trading companies. Today, Switzerland is home to about 900 companies involved in commodity trading, including giants such as Glencore, Vail, Cargill, Vitol and Trafigura, which are among the world's biggest traders. There are also many small and medium-sized businesses, with as few as two employees. The firms employ about 10,000 people and contribute nearly 4% of the country's GDP in 2019. By comparison, the pharmaceutical sector contributes 5.4% of the GDP. Landlocked Switzerland accounts for 22% of global commodities shipping. More specifically, Swiss-based commodity trading companies handle 65% of the world's cotton, 60% of metal and grains, 55% of coffee, 45% of sugar, 40% of all oil, and 35% of cocoa. Almost none of these raw commodities actually enter the country's borders. They are just traded in Switzerland. Swiss-based banks are among the most important lenders to the commodity trading business. In 2016, they provided 62 billion francs. However, following a recent series of bankruptcies and frauds in the oil trade, several major banks have announced they have closed or reduced their commodity trading finance departments. Outside of Europe, the United States, Hong Kong, Singapore and several offshore locations such as Panama and the Cayman Islands are among Switzerland's biggest competitors as a commodities trading hub. Commodity trading is often criticised for its role in facilitating corruption, environmental damage and human rights violations. Because of the partially virtual aspect of the trade and the numerous intermediaries involved, one of the main challenges in this fundamental business is knowing how and where raw materials are obtained. For example, demand for cheap food means that commodities like palm oil and soy are constantly at the heart of the debate around deforestation. In some places, farmers clear patches of tropical forest to produce these commodities. Child labour is a known issue on cocoa plantations, and several big companies are trying to monitor the situation to certify their chocolate as child labour free. Finally, lots of raw materials are sourced in politically unstable countries, which opens opportunities for corruption. This can lead to what is called the resource curse, where only the elite few profit from a nation's resource bounty. These concerns are often attributed to the commodity trading sector as a whole. Because of the many intermediaries involved, responsibility has been very hard to pin down. Are investors who are looking to make a quick buck from commodity trading as complicit as big commodity firms that buy and sell tons of gold, cocoa and oil? What is the responsibility of countries like Switzerland, where these traders operate? Despite its leading position in the sector, Switzerland has been slow in getting to grips with commodity traders and the controversies surrounding them. It was not until 2015 that the government adopted a corporate social responsibility plan to guide the conduct of companies abroad. More specific guidelines for the commodity industry were not proposed until 2018. This included a set of 16 recommendations to help minimise the risks posed by the Swiss commodity sector. An interdepartmental platform on commodities was created to evaluate if the recommendations were being implemented. But no binding regulations for the industry have been imposed by the government, which has acknowledged the need to be competitive to avoid losing business to Dubai, Singapore or London. 
So far, its most far-reaching measure has been supporting the drafting and implementation of specific standards and initiatives for the commodity trading sector. It will take more than one country's efforts to reform the commodity sector. A patchwork of international agreements and standards, such as the UN Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights, or specific industry efforts like the Better Gold Initiative, are trying to change the status quo. But because it's such an important player in this global business, activists say that Switzerland should take on more responsibility and set an example on good governance. In 2020, Swiss voters launched, but narrowly rejected, a people's initiative to make Switzerland-based multinationals legally accountable for their business practices abroad. The vote showed that citizens and consumers are increasingly ready to demand accountability and transparency in the commodity trading sector. A once opaque operation that flew under the radar is gradually being forced to become more transparent and accountable due to stricter laws, regulations, NGO advocacy and consumer awareness. It remains to be seen whether Switzerland will help lead the change. <laughs>